So as was stated um, above, uh, this this is a two week series of uh, labs where we where we did a lot of discussion, um, and <clears throat> the discussion centered around how how and why we do experiments. Now we do all kinds of experiments in agriculture. We do all kinds of experiments in social sciences and a, and a bunch of other sciences. So this is applicable sort of across the uh, across the board. You can see on your sheet, and what, what I want you to do is just follow along with me, and, and on your own sheet, you need to be writing the answers um, to these questions. Um, the first of which is, uh, why do we do, what, what do experiments do? So you'll see uh, this question here, what do experiments do? And what I want you to do is write down uh, some answers to this. Now, as you're watching this, you might want to press pause um, as you write down some answers so you can make the most of, uh, of your time, so that it's not just me telling you. Uh, what the answers are. I'll give you some possibilities. I won't give you all the, the possibilities. Um, so at this point you can just uh, press pause and, and write down what you think experiments do, two or three things uh, about what experiments do. Okay, so hopefully you have uh, have some things written down. Um, <clears throat> you might have said something like test a hypothesis or uh, solve a problem. Um, uh, give you answers to a, a problem that you have. Compare compare treatments. Uh, compare fertilizer versus non-fertilized, and so forth. And those are all good. Um, what I want you to do now is is pretend like I, I gave you a a set of factors and a set of things. Uh, so here we've got barley seed, uh, peat soil, so just a, a potting soil, cone containers. Cone containers just look they look kind of like this. Like a cone, um, they're about let's say uh, two inches or so uh, in diameter and about eight inches tall. Um, just kind of a pot. Um, you've got city water, you've got a climate controlled greenhouse, and you've got some fertilizers. And that's a lot of different things that you could <clears throat> use to design a, an experiment. And you could probably think of several experiments that you could design just using those uh, factors. So what I want you to do in the next part is uh, list three po possible experiments that you could perform and, and that would answer a re research question like when such and such of a treatment is applied, barley is affected compared to when that treatment is not applied. So what sort of, um, what sort of parameters using, using, uh, using these uh, things that I've given you or pretended to give you. What could you, what kind of a different things could you find out? And let's say things you could find out about barley and how it grows or how it uh, germinates. So what I want you to do is take time and write three different possible experiments that you could perform here. Write those down. Um, that would tell you something about barley and how it grows uh, in, in one instance compared to another instance. So go ahead and press pause and then write those three things down. So you, you might have chosen, for instance, to, um, to uh, maybe test like what happens when you put barley seed deeper in the soil versus barley seed, say, like a, a half inch in the soil. So you could uh, experiment with seed depth. You might be able to, you might want to experiment with, hey, maybe giving that seed, uh, give, giving that barley seed more or less water. That would be interesting to see what happens if we did, if we did that. And, and of course, you'd want to be thinking about two different, two different treatments, a, a treatment that, um, that, that was a normal treatment, and then and we'll call that treatment one. And you might have a treatment that's, that's your treatment, you know, wh whatever you do that's different from that. So in seeding depth, I might have treatment one is, uh, a half inch deep and treatment two is three inches deep. What happens when I put a barley seed three inches uh, deep in, in the soil? So hopefully you've got, you got three of those. So, so now what we're going to do is ask, okay, so what if we, if we test one of those treatments, uh, so pick out whichever one you say you like the best, um, and pretend like you set that treatment up. How, how, what would you gather, what data would you gather from that experiment to know whether or not the barley actually responded like positively or negatively to that treatment? So we could take the, let's say, the seeding depth treatment. Um, what could you measure at the end of, let's say, a week? Uh, let's say the barley germinates and grows a week or two weeks, for instance. 
Um, what could you measure about that barley plant that would tell you that when it had plenty of water, it responded better than when it didn't have plenty of water? So write some of the measurements. There could be several, right? There could be several things that you measure. Write what you could measure here. And press pause. Okay, so so some of the measurements might might have might be uh, shoot growth, right? How how tall? We can shoot height. Okay, so how tall was was the shoot once you did that uh, did that treatment? All right, so we're gonna keep uh, keep going along those same lines. And what I want you to do here is pretend like okay, pretend like I gave those uh, gave the gave that material to you, and I said okay, now draw for me. Um, what the experiment might actually look like in in reality. Um, so what you know, how how many containers do you need? How many barley seeds do, do you need? Um, what would the setup look like? There's a couple different ways you could you could draw it, right? You can draw a, a particular treatment like this from looking from the top down, uh, and and you want to think about well, how you know maybe I, I put one seed in there, maybe uh, three, whatever you think uh, you should do, and maybe here's you know there's another treatment and. Put you know another set of seeds in there. Uh, how would you set this up? So go ahead and draw that out, and maybe label uh, label your treatment. So I'd label that treatment one and, and treatment two. Um, so go ahead and draw that. Now I want you to think pretty deeply about here here about what makes a good experiment. Like what makes an experiment verifiable, and what what can make you confident in an experiment. It, would this, would this, if I went out and set this up in the greenhouse, would this kind of setup make you confident in the results or or not? Um, and so what could I do, uh, you know, with a setup like this to make it even more, to make yourself more confident or to be more confident in the results uh, than just maybe even say one or two um, uh, versions. Okay, so go ahead and press pause and I want you to draw that out uh, on your paper right there. All right, so you, you've drawn drawn your um, your experiment out. Typically, what students might do is, let's say we had one or two or even three uh, treatments. So, so they might draw it out like this. You know, I've got my container here, and this is going to be treatment one. You know, I'm going to put two uh, barley uh, seeds there. There's my uh, treatment two, and you know, I did another treatment just to make sure things were. Uh, you know, just to see if something else was happening there. Maybe I did, um, you know, full water here and half the that amount of water and a fourth uh, of that amount of water in in this one. And so I set up my set up my treatment like that. Um, and and that's cool. Uh, what what you need to think about is let me do some some erasing here. Oops. Okay, so I've erased, uh, erased that. And, and l let's think about something. If we only had, uh, let's say, two treatments, treatment one and treatment two, uh, and I put this in the greenhouse, I, you know, I set it on a bench. What's going to happen if, um, if I just happen to get two bad seeds right there? Right? What, what's going to happen if these two seeds were actually not very good um, seed, and, and I just happen to randomly pick that out? Now, what's your what are your results going to look like, right? It's going to look like well, treatment two outperformed treatment one, right? Because you didn't have any germination in uh, in treatment one, and so that wasn't any good. So, uh, so you might think, well, what can I do to kind of counteract that? Because you you know you never know when that might happen. Hopefully, you get good seed, but you never know when when you you know something like that would happen. Um, so the first thing you might do is say, well, <clears throat> instead of having in, instead of having just one. Uh, version of that. Maybe I'm going to do like two or e maybe even three. Okay, so now uh, instead of this kind of setup, you would say, okay, treatment one. And instead of just having one of those, I'm going to do. I'm going to do three, and that's three of the same experiment, right? Three of the same treatment, there. So all three of these are going to get full water, right? This one's going to get full water. That one and the other one. 
And then I'll say, okay, treatment two is going to be um, my other treatment that is um, that is half of the water. Okay, so so this one's going to get half, this one's going to get half, and this one's going to get half. Okay. All right. Now that that's a little. You can probably be more confident in that, right? Because even if even in the horrible case that uh, that we had this one uh, not germinate and that one not germinate, you've still got two more uh, samples, two more treatments that are the same treatment as this one to, to get an average from. And really, that's, that's one of the things you want is to, at the end of the time is to get an average um, uh, a growth from that or an average of whatever data you're taking from each one of those uh, treatments, right? Uh, and so, so that's cool. Really, in, in, in um, let's say, uh, real science, um, what you want to do is have even, uh, even more than, than just three um, versions of those treatments. So uh, what we might do in, in a field situation is have maybe even five okay, of, that, of, of that same treatment. So all these treatments are the same. There's always two barley seeds and and full water given to every single one of these. Okay, here the same thing happens. Five uh, five versions of treatment two. So that way, if something happens, if somebody somebody knocks over this one and completely destroys it, and and uh, you know knocks over that one too and completely destroys it, then we still have a backup, right? We still have we still have enough to. Uh, to get a, a good average, right, which means basically you need at least three in, in uh, scientific realms to, to get a good average. So uh, so that, that helps us, that repeating of each one of these helps us uh, when we design an experiment. Now let's say we, uh, uh, we, we have this the same sort of situation here and, and um, we have this good setup and we're getting pretty confident in our... Um, in our setup, let me just redraw some of these real fast, um, and, and that's good. This is, this would make you more confident, right? Than than when you were doing that. You don't want to you don't want to just do that because you know there's some some difficulties with that. Okay, so uh, so now um, what's going to happen when get rid of that? What's going to happen when we have our uh, our treatment one? And treatment two, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five of those treatments. Um, and we've got our barley uh, planted in there. Incidentally, you probably uh, in uh, probably want to do more than just three. Maybe you want to do five um, barley seeds in each one of these. So I'll put those in there. Right, because again, if you if you want to just be more confident, right, uh, then you want to make sure that just in case a couple of those die, you won't you won't be um, you won't be in trouble, right? You'll still be able to get an average, let's say, shoot height uh, from these. Okay, that's cool. So what happens now if um, if I take this out and I put it on the uh, I put it on a, a a bench in my climate control greenhouse, and I I set it in such a way I've got let's say I've got a little uh, a rack that these can all stand on, um, and and they they are oriented just like this. And let's say that we've got, and and this is in fact the case uh, in our greenhouse, we've got a big a big heater. So we'll put H for heater, and that heater is on one side of the greenhouse and and not on another side of the greenhouse. And let's say it's blowing all that hot air this way over uh, your experiment. Now, now, what might be a problem with the way we set it up? Well, uh, if, if this is really hot air coming out of here, let's say at this point, it's, it's pretty hot. Uh, and by the time, let's, you know, we can expand this to be a, a bigger space. And by the time it gets over here, the, 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 hair, the air is not that hot. So which ones are the first ones to get, to, uh, to get this heat, right? Well, they're, they're right here. Right, those ones are going to get really, really hot, and maybe damage, maybe be damaged uh, because of that heat. So I'm going to lose some of some of my uh, versions of treatment one and versions of treatment two that I had originally uh, put there, and that's that's not going to be very good either, right? Because what? Uh, let's let's think of another case where we had um, on this side, maybe we had a um, a fan, right, that was blowing over the experiment in, in this way, 
Okay, and now what gets most affected? Well, these 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 treatment ones get really affected, and the treatment twos don't get as affected. So when you go to look at the average of of treatment one, you'd be like, well, I don't, you know, you wouldn't be very confident in the average because this fan is affecting this area right here. So now our now our we have a, another problem. So we solved one problem, which was making sure we have more than just a single one, and now we have a different problem, and that problem is uh, making sure that we. Um, that we equally um, spread the risk or the environment out over all the experiments and not and we don't favor either or sorry over all the experiment we don't favor either one of the treatments right so uh, so now what we want to do is, is see if there's some way we can think about making sure that we've got enough of a certain treatment right we had five uh, of a certain treatment we'll call that replication okay five replications uh, of that certain treatment. Um, and so, so we've got five, one, two, three, four, five, and we've got another five, one, two, three, four, five of treatment two. Only now what I'm going to do is to spread out, let's say we can't do anything about the heater, we can't do anything about the fan that was here. What we can do is mix up the treatments, right? We can, we can uh, not, not literally mix them up, but actually place them in this, uh, in this area in a mixed up manner so that no one treatment gets uh, gets more or uh, or less um, exposure to one of these elements elements right so the heater or the fan so we could say okay well uh, I'm gonna put a treatment one there and I'm, another treatment one here and I'll put a treatment two there I'll put a treatment two here uh, another treatment two here, a treatment one there. Uh, let's see, I've got one, two, three, uh, treatment one here, treatment two here, treatment one, and then a treatment two, right? One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now we mixed it up so that regardless of, of what's happening, we have equal exposure to those risks by each one of the treatments, okay? So, so these are some of the things that we think about. We always think about in, um, in in designing experiments, making sure we have enough of a treatment so that we can get a good average, and spreading that the risk of wherever we are. Because really, what what this can be is soil differences, right? If this is a if this is a treatment that I have in the field, okay, if this is a treatment that I have in the field, and I've got a plot here, and a plot here, and and I just keep doing that. Um, in my field, let's say I'm growing, uh, growing wheat, okay, and I've got a bunch of bunch of plots. Well, I may have, and 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 I don't want to put right. You don't want to put all treatment ones on that one, and you don't want to put all treatment twos on that one. So what we do is we randomize, we mix them up because you never know when uh, there may be a, a you know a seam of of clay that runs through that that field. Um, that that's gonna that's not it's not on any one single um, treatment area, right? It's just kind of it's it's randomly there. Okay, it's naturally there, and that can affect your your uh, treatments. But if you have them randomized, if you have you know these treatments randomized in this area, right, all through here, then you the, then you spread that risk of this big clay seam that's on the soil underneath. You spread that risk uh, over all of uh, over all those treatments. Okay, so, whoops. Okay, so here we go. Um, all right, so we've got that. Now we're now so we've learned a little bit about that. Let's, so now we're on our next page, and um, what we see is that is that when we go through an exercise like this, we learn. Uh, we learned some things. The first is that you need a control, right? Control. And we said we wanted one treatment, and our treatment was treatment one. That was optimum. Right? There wasn't any treatment actually made on that treatment one, so we can just call that the control. Sometimes that'll be called the check. It's just the thing that, that is either optimum or ha doesn't have any of the treatment applied to it. The number two is replication. Replication. And that just means if I have treatment one, I'm going to do it several times, at least three, if not more. Four would be a good, uh, would be a good uh, number of replications of treatment one 
to have. Okay. Yeah, you're repeating yourself. You're repeating. You're repeating the experiment over or the treatment over and over again. But that's okay because it gives us an average. If something falls over or something dies, it's okay. We've got other ones to deal with. And then the final one is randomization. Randomization and randomization is the mixing uh, and spreading out of risk over the whole experiment. Um, and we do this in all we do this in all uh, verifiable experiments um, that we that we perform in science. All right. So knowing those things, knowing control, replication, and randomization, I want you to in this space redraw your experiment using that knowledge so you had so so make sure you have a control make sure you have several replications make sure you have another treatment and several replications and then make sure those are randomized in in your space so I want you to draw that out here you can press pause and draw that out okay so hopefully you have uh, something to look a little bit more a little bit closer to what we uh, drew on the last page um, and then we'll move on from uh, from there. I want you to um, page here. Oops. So I, I want you to take out this uh, sheet. This is a journal article, and journal articles are a specialized kind of of writing. This uh, journal article has to do well. I'm going to let you figure out what it has to do with. Um, but I want you to read through this article. I want you to time yourself. I want you to give yourself only um, 15 minutes to read as much as you can in this article. I'm going to say that this article is different from other kinds of articles, right? It's not a Time Magazine article. It's not a, an article in a popular magazine. It's not a newspaper article. It's a science scientific article. Um, so what I want you to do is read through this. As you're reading through this, I want you to note how it's written. I want you to note how it's different from uh, from a regular newspaper article or a regular Time magazine uh, article that you might read. Um, short article, for instance, or a popular article. I want you to note the difference. I also want you to know that you're going to encounter words that you've never seen before, and that's completely fine. You just need to continue to read, just kind of muscle on through it and see if you can determine what this experiment was about. So I want you to press pause, I want you to take 15 minutes, I want you to read through this article, uh, make some notes, underline stuff you don't understand, um, uh, see if you can come up with the, the uh, determining how the experiment was done and why the experiment was done. What did they learn from this experience, experiment? So go ahead and press pause. Okay, so is your is your brain completely completely fried? That's okay if it is, uh, because again, like I said, this is there's a lot of information uh, here in this article. Um, so you, you need to think about, and I'll just ask you rhetorically, what is this about? What is this article about? If you answered something like corn and phosphorus for fertilizers in somewhere in South America. Central America, you would be correct, but you wouldn't be correct in saying the word corn. Did they say corn in, in anywhere in this journal article? They didn't. They absolutely didn't. So uh, they, they would always say maize uh, in this article. That's important because that's uh, for you, you know, if you're uh, if you're thinking about different finding different research on corn, this is this is published by an American publishing um, company, the American Society of Agronomy. This is from the Agronomy Journal. This is an American publication. It comes out of the United States of America. Uh, and it's got international units, and it's got nothing having to do with what we call Z-maize, which is corn. It has everything to do with what, other, what, what the international community calls maize. So that's the first thing to, uh, to, to understand from this. Again, there was a lot of different uh, things going on here. You need to be able to say, okay, this was about phosphorus, and this is about phosphorus fertilizer and some different kinds and some different methods that were happening in Central, uh, Central America. Um, <clears throat> I would also ask you rhetorically, um, what was the best treatment? Okay. What was the best treat? What gave us the best response to phosphorus from all the treatments that we had on here? 
Uh, if you say uh, whatever the TSP is, triple superphosphate at a high rate banded, you would be correct, right? And we can see that just right here in the abstract uh, area, right? So we can see triple superphosphate band applied at 26 kgs of phosphorus per hectare had the best uh, probability of an economic response to fertilizer across environments, okay? So, number one, you didn't have to read the whole article to understand what they did in this research, right? You didn't have to, you didn't have to do that. Um, however, if you did read the whole article, oh, by the way, this little uh, nomenclature here, uh, way of writing things here, that's 26 kilograms of phosphorus, and that HA negative 1, that just means you take that HA and you put it in the denominator, and so it turns out to be, okay, 26 kilograms of phosphorus per hectare, right, per hectare. So uh, that's what that's just kind of a uh, funny way of writing that. So yeah, you could just read the abstract. This is key. If you're looking for information, if you're doing a report and looking for information, you can look at the you can look at the title and you can look at the abstract and you know immediately whether or not this is going to be more or less useful to you. Now, I'd encourage you uh, if you really want to understand what's happening in this, that you would read, uh, if you said this is what, this was important, you would read uh, read beyond just the title and the abstract. One of the reasons here was because this actually shed, sheds light on how corn is grown in Central America. And we would say, well, what Central American countries? And, and you would answer, well, there was six Central American countries over two years that this ex these experiments were done in. But this little piece right here, okay, shows you that, that there's maize, there, they do grow maize in Central America. It's on these volcanic ash-based uh, soils. It's in a sloped environment, and it's usually continuously cultivated, and it's on marginal land. This isn't very good land that this is uh, happening on, not, not, not kind of our Iowa-type soil that it's, uh, that it's happening on. The other thing you would learn about the culture of where this came from Right in this area, most experiments were conducted on farm and under predominant maize-based cropping systems at each location where fertilizing, where fertilizing, planting, and harvest are all accomplished by hand. Okay, so not a lot of uh, of machinery that's available there. So even though this is a journal article and a science journal and it's all it's got all kinds of words in it that I don't really understand, there's still um, there's still some cultural things that are happening, some some insights into how they grow in different countries, in different places, and that can be key. The other thing I'll tell you is, or just mention, is this right here. Sanchez, 1976. What, what's that? Well, that's a citation. So that means that whatever came before it, usually the sentence that came before it, or it could be multiple sentences before it, uh, were taken and summarized from somebody else's work. So someone else, Sanchez, whoever that is, did work in the field on particular thing that pertains to this paper, the authors of this paper read that work, and then they said, hey, you know what, that's good knowledge. I'm going to summarize that in, in my own words, and I'm going to put it in my paper, and then I'm going to say, you know what, that idea, that summary came from Sanchez and whatever work he did in 1976, whether it's an article or a book or whatever. And you can see they do this pretty regularly, right? Here, 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 everywhere, okay? We've got these citations happening. And that, what that, just circling that, what that makes you understand is that most of the words contained in, in this research actually aren't, or the ideas, aren't really the ideas of the author. The author is just going to different resources and putting together a narrative of whatever they're talking about from other people's ideas, right? This is, this is really key. This is what scientists do. This is what you do in a research report is you take other people's ideas and you summarize them and you cite them, right? So uh, if, if we're really interested in this, uh, we can turn, and you can, you can turn back to the back, uh, to the back section, and you should be able to find Sanchez's work from 1976 or Jews and Black's work from 1950 and look up what the title of that work was and you'll see in the references it's in uh, it's in uh, alphabetical order okay so that's another key that's another thing that's different from uh, from regular old uh, writing uh, from regular old time or time magazine or popular press writing 
so hopefully that was that was kind of insightful for you. There's a lot of things that are happening. It's really really dense with information, uh, but it, but it's really important to be able to to read through one of these documents to be able to navigate your way through um, a, a journal document like this. That can be this can be helpful for any kind of research that uh, that you do um, in this class or in, or in other classes. Okay, so now we're going to move on to uh, to the second week of uh, of material, and, and for the first week, that's about all. Uh, that's about all we, we covered. We had a lot of discussion. We had time in reading. We talked a lot about that paper and what the con the, the components of that paper were, um, and and we just tried to think a little bit deep deeper about an experiment. Uh, in week two, what we're doing is we're we're asking the question. Okay, let, let's say we did an experiment and we got data back from that experiment. Uh, when we get that those numbers back from from an experiment, we, it looks something like this. So you can see uh, this uh, sufficient water treatment. So in this case, we planted something. Let's say it was barley. We planted barley, and we had three replications of barley that got sufficient water, and we had three other replications that didn't get sufficient water. They were they were drought treatment, um, and and so we got some results, right? So so for for this one, for plant height replication one, we got 10 inches. So the plant height was 10 inches in replication one, and we'll, it's probably an average. The plant height in replication two of that same treatment was 18, and the plant height in replication three was two inches. Now you might think, oh, I think that's maybe a typo there. Shouldn't that be like 12 inches or something? No, in this case, it's not. In this case, uh, it, it's not a, an error. That's That's actually what it was. Okay, uh, and then we go to the drought treatment. And we see in replication one it was ten inches, in replication two it was eleven inches, and in replication three it was uh, nine inches. Okay, now <clears throat> what I want you to do is just do this, right? What is the average plant height for the sufficient water treatment? So up here we would take ten plus eighteen plus two, and we divide that by three. Okay, so I want you to write that uh, that down. If you need to press pause, that's cool. Go ahead and uh, do that. And then for uh, for the drought treatment, you want to calculate that too. So that would be this information here, the, the 10 plus the 11 plus the 9 divided by 3. And you can put that information uh, there. So now, looking at those two numbers, which should be 10 and 10, an average of 10 for the sufficient water and an average of 10 for the drought treatment, did that make a difference? Did the treatments that we applied, did these two treatments make a difference to plant height? What do you think? Yes? No? Maybe? Write that down. Okay. If, if, you, if, you, if you had any, any bit of question, like, like you know what, those, those averages are the, those means, those averages are the same. We've got an average of 10 and an average of 10, but something's, something's not right. If you had all had a uh, a thought like that, good job for you. If you didn't, then then you probably need to pay pay a little closer attention to these numbers. Look at these numbers right, uh, right here, and look at these numbers right here. If you had to describe those numbers and what's really going on in those numbers, and what might make might make you think, you know what, this doesn't tell me the whole story. These these two averages don't tell me everything that's going on. How would you describe that, right? So, so right here, compare those two sets of numbers, and and right down there, how are those different? How are those when you compare one set to another? How are they different? So go ahead and write that down. You can press pause if you want. So, so when you're comparing, hopefully you noticed that that the that the the what we call the range, okay. The distance between the lowest number and the highest number was something like 16 uh, for the sufficient water treatment. The range uh, for the drought treatment is 2, right? A difference of 2 between the 9 and the 11. Okay, so that those two numbers could describe how those two um, sets of numbers are, are different, right? And what we do in science is we say that is variability variability or variation okay so we see that that these numbers here are are quite variable they they're not 
kind of clustered together like our drought treatment numbers are. Drought treatment numbers are pretty tightly together. Our sufficient water treatment number, they're way wide apart. Okay, So we, we take that into account. You can't, if you just said, well, there's no differences, there's no difference between these treatments, period, the end. Well, you wouldn't be telling the whole story, would you? No, because, because we have a pretty significant amount of difference between the variation of each one of those sets of numbers. Okay, so 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 we got to so we got to do something different than just look at the averages in any set of numbers that we get back from experiments. Now, let me just pause for a second and say this is how we do it. This is what we do. This is called statistics. This is the best use of math um, in the sciences that we have. This is applicable mathematics. And if you know how to add and subtract and multiply and divide, if you know how to square a number, if you know how to square root a number, you have all the necessary tools you need to complete statistics uh, in this form. So <clears throat> when we collect data, so we'll start here, uh, when we collect data about an experiment, we care about more than just the average of the treatment. We also care about how different the numbers from each replication R, right? So we want to know that replication 1 was this, replication 2 was that, and replication 3 was the other thing. We want, we want to know if they're clustered together or if they're very far apart. That helps us interpret the averages. That helps us interpret the, uh, the mean of those two sets of, uh, of numbers. So what we do is we perform what we call statistical analysis of the numbers and we look at each replication and in this case we're going to perform a t-test and a t-test is just doing some math on the numbers that we have and right now you only have six numbers eight numbers six numbers so you have three from treatment one and three from treatment two and from that you got an average of both of those so six and then an extra two for the two averages you got from those numbers right so it's really just six numbers that we're dealing with that we want to perform some perform some analysis analyses on so we're going to do some math. That's cool. So get a calculator. Hopefully you have one, or, or you can use a, a Google, or you can use your phone, or whatever. Um, but you need a calculator. So we're going to do a t-test. We're going to put some numbers. We're going to basically mash all these numbers together so that we get one number. And that one number is a number that we're going to compare to uh, to the t statistic. And if it's greater than the t statistic, if our number that we calculate is greater than the t statistic then we actually say, hey, there's a difference. There is really a statistically significant difference between our two treatments. If our number is lower than the t-statistic, then our, then our treatments weren't effective. There wasn't, uh, there wasn't an effect of the treatments, and, and it wasn't sig significant. Uh, so, so we'll move on from here to, to do uh, some of that math. And the first thing I want you to do is just watch with me what happens. Watch with me what we do in that in this kind of statistical analysis. Okay, so we have another new experiment. In this experiment, 15 seeds were placed in the soil and we had a, 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 a three replicates that went into light, uh, into a, a light, an, an environment with light, and then we, went, we had 15, um, uh, where we had three replicates that went uh, into a dark into like let's say a closet or something like that. We held everything else constant, so you want, want to make sure that you know you have the water is constant, the temperature is constant, uh, the seeds. Uh, you know we we did fifteen in replicate one and fifteen in replicate two and fifteen in replicate three. Everything else is constant except for that thing that we differ that that treatment that we make. So we might consider we might consider in this case uh, our light treatment is um, is our control. Um, so we did this experiment, we got data back. The data said that we've got uh, replicate one is 10 seeds and you can read all these, these numbers here versus the dark treatment, okay? So we've got an average, so we calculate the mean, and we've got an average for the light treatment of 11.67 and an average of the dark treatment of nine. Now at this point I could say, so was there a difference? Is there a difference between these two, um, uh, these two treatments? And you might initially say, well, yeah, there was. I mean, one's like one point or you know, two point six seven above the other one, and and that that's true. The the average is, uh, is of the light treatment is above the average for the dark treatment. But again, remember, it doesn't tell us everything, and we need some help interpreting these two numbers. So we get that help from uh, from this t test, and from actually looking at the uh, the variance and the variability of each one of those. 
um, replications themselves. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do in our uh, in our t test is calculate this thing that we call uh, variance. We label it s squared. And you know, I like to tell students this. You could put an emoji for a smiley face emoji there. It doesn't matter that it says s, s squared at at this point in your education. Um, what matters is that when you see s squared, you say mm, okay, variance, whatever that mathematical function is. Okay, so. Um, so here, and just, just to let you note, in, uh, uh, in here uh, is the number of replicates you had, okay? The number of replications you had. In our case, that's uh, three. Okay, so, uh, so we go through this equation, okay, for, for the light treatment. So we're going to deal with the light treatment here. We have 10 squared and 11 squared and 14 squared, and you should be asking yourself the question, where did 10 and 11 and 14 come from? Well, that was the that was the numbers right here. Th those were the replication numbers that we had. Okay, so we take those numbers and we square each one, and then we add all of them together. Okay, that's cool. I can get a number from that, and then we subtract that from that. We subtract ten plus eleven plus fourteen. That quantity is squared. Okay, it's a little bit different than what we just did, and we divide it by three. Okay, three is uh, because of the number of replicates we had. We take this number, and you probably need to draw this on your on your paper because I didn't draw it on here. That number goes to the top. Okay, that go that number goes to the top, and then we divide that by n minus one. In our case, n is three, so three minus one is two, so nine divided by two is four point five. Okay, so we've got a, a variance for the light treatment. We did the same thing over here for. Um, the dark treatment, and we ended up with a, a variance of 1. Now, that should make sense, right? Because go back and look at the replications. The, the light replication has more variability in it. It's wider space. Those three numbers are spaced wider apart than the dark treatment, okay? And so what we just did is, is we made a number for that, right? We made a, a uh, variance number that expresses that kind of wideness apart. Okay, that's cool. And, and see, I said that's cool. So that's cool. Um, <clears throat> so now what we need to do is we, we need to basically push these two numbers together and kind of smash them together and get what we call a pooled variance. Okay, so here, we start here with our uh, n minus 1. Well, that's 3 minus 1, so that's 2 times 4.5 plus the quantity. And there's 2 again times 1. Okay, we do that. And this is 2, and that's 2. And so this under here is going to be uh, 4. And we end up doing that uh, equation, and you'll, you will do this equation here in a second. Uh, and we end up with a 2.7 Five. Okay, so that's our pooled variance. We did some math and smashed those two variances together, and now we have 2.75. Let's turn the page. Okay, again, cool. And again, I wrote cool down, so awesome. Um, <clears throat> now we're going we're gonna to actually calculate our final step is to calculate what we call our t-statistic, and that's the number that we're going to compare to another number that we got from a book for this kind of experiment. Okay, so, uh, and again, that t value tells is what tells us if those two original means, those original averages, are really mathematically different from one another. Okay, so here we go. So uh, we have our t statistic, and our t statistic starts with 11.67 minus 9, which is what? Where did we get that? Where did that come from? Well, if you look at your other page, you'll see that those are the averages. Those are the means from our treatments, okay? That's cool. I'm going to draw this little uh, absolute, those, those little absolute value bars on the side of that because you just want to make sure that you're dealing, you're not dealing with a negative number. It's possible that you might have uh, one treatment that's higher than the other, and you put that in a, in a place in, in a, you place that here so you can get a negative number. So you can just take, just make the sure you take the positive of that, uh, of that difference there. And then we, down here below, we square root the number 2.75. Where does that come from? Well, that was our pooled variance. And we multiply that times 1 over n. That would be 1 over 3. And plus 1 over n. Okay, there's 1 over 3 again. Okay. And that equals this number, 2.67, divided by 0.95. When we do that, we get 2.789. Okay. Now, we, get, we go pull this dry, dusty statistics book that's really super geeky and awesome, and we, we look in the back of the book, and it says, when you have a test that looks like the test that we just, that looks like, when you have an experiment that looks like the experiment that we just did, and we measure that in terms of two degree, or, uh, four degrees of freedom and uh, two-tailed, two, da, 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 all this uh, statistical stuff, when you have a test that's set up like that, 
the number, your T number, your T, your T uh, comparison number is 2.78. Okay, so if we find that our T value, which we do, is greater than 2.78, ours is 2.789, so that's awesome. We're higher than that. Then we have a significant difference. Ours is 2.789, okay, so that means the light and dark treatments are significantly different from one another. And in fact, the light treatment is significantly better, causes significantly more uh, seeds to germinate than our dark treatment does. Okay, totally awesome. Now it's your turn. So with these numbers, okay, on the rest of this uh, sheet, and there should be another sheet behind this that, uh, that allows you to have some space to do this calculation, you want to do the calculation on uh, on those numbers. Okay, so go ahead and do the calculations following the exact format that we had for those for the numbers that we just went through. Do your calculation and see if your if your, if your test statistic is if your t statistic is greater than or less than two point seven eight because this experiment is just like the experiment we uh, did. And uh, so you want to compare your test, your T statistic to 2.78. So go ahead and press pause and perform that calculation using the sheets that you have. Okay, so um, you should have had a, um, for the sufficient treatment, <clears throat> you should have had a mean of 8.667 uh, for the drought you should have had a mean of 6.167 and your numbers might look a little different if you kept uh, if you kept more or less decimal places uh, than I did the s squared for the sufficient should have been something like 0 0.334 and again if you find something different here you want to go back and just make sure that you did it correctly because when you do your experiment you're going to get data back from that that uh, that you're going to have to um, calculate uh, inform you're going to have to calculate your um, statistics on uh, the s squared drought uh, should equal something like 1.083 your s squared pooled should equal 0 0.709 okay. and your final t statistic should be something like 3.6 Three, four, and again, if you're not exactly at that point, if you're three point seven or three point five or something like that, you're pretty close. Um, so our T statistic is greater than two point seven eight. So we would say that the uh, that the that there is statistical uh, difference between the sufficient and the drought treatment, and that the sufficient water treatment outperformed or did better than the drought treatment. Okay, for uh, for germination. Okay, so that's how we do uh, do statistics. Uh, again, you're going to need to um, you're going to need to do uh, to make sure you you have all this written down. You'll be uh, turning in um, all these uh, pages uh, for credit. Okay, so um, the next stage in this uh, is to set up your experiment. Here's what I'm going to provide for you. Um, so I've got some peat soil. Uh, I've got small containers. They're approximately 4 inches by 4 inches um, for the surface area, about 4 inches deep. Okay? Um, so they're kind of, oops, they're kind of these square uh, containers like so. Okay? Um, I'll be watering uh, your, uh, your treatments you know, when you place them in the greenhouse. And you'll see, you'll probably see where other students have placed them. Um, you need to set up this experiment, and you're going to have some freedom here. Here's where your freedom is. You are free to choose two species of uh, plants. So you could choose uh, wheat and barley, or corn and uh, soybeans, or just whatever you want to choose of a crop species um, from, uh, from the selection that we have in our uh, lab. For each of those species, you want to have a control and you want to have uh, a treatment, some kind of treatment. And you want to have three replications of every single thing that you do. Um, so you can, you can choose what treatment you want to do. Whichever treatment you choose, like let's say we did a planting depth and, and we had uh, wheat for our species one, and this was our control. I might put um, wheat at its typical depth, you know, maybe like half an inch uh, in the soil. And then for, tr for this, I might put it like, 
you know, like we said earlier, three inches in uh, deep in the soil uh, to see what happened. Whatever treatment I choose, I want to make sure that I apply that treatment at both places, right? So, so I'm going to do it for wheat over here, and I'm going to do it for corn over here as well. So you only really just choose one treatment, but you'll apply it to, do to, to two different uh, species, okay? So uh, what you need, so you can choose planting depth. You can choose fertilizer versus un, no fertilizer. So the control will get no fertilizer, and the treatment would be uh, fertilized. For instance, same thing over here, no fertilizer, and then the treatment would be fertilized. Um, you could choose spacing, right? You could have, um, if I'm looking from the top down, maybe I could have um, several of them kind of spread out evenly over the surface. Uh, it would be my uh, control, and then my other treatment might be um, everything put like you know, right, just cluster together right there in the middle. You can choose what kind of treatment you want to do, as long as when you apply the treatment, it's both the same here and here for the two different species. Um, okay, so that's your treatment possibilities. Just some notes. Make sure that however many seeds you put in a container, that that seed number is equal across the across the whole experiment, right? So if I choose 15 seeds, you might... You might 15 would be pretty good, right? If I choose 15 seeds, this rep is going to get 15, this rep is going to get 15, this rep, this rep, this rep, this rep, all the way across the experiment, you're going to have 15, uh, 15 seeds, okay? So make sure it's equal across the experiment. Um, and then you'll need to label, uh, you just need to keep, keep good track, right? You want to say, okay, I chose this treatment because by, by the next time you see this, you might have got a concussion and you forgot what you what treatment you chose right so um, so make sure you write down you keep good notes you can keep notes on this paper if you want um, so uh, so keep good notes about what treatment you applied and what two species you had when you um, go to label your pot you might want to put a, a label that's that's meaningful for you so my example here is wheat so my wheat control replication one Okay, wheat control replication one. When I see that label, I'm going to say, oh, hey, that's this one right here. Okay, wheat control treatment replication one, right? And so you just need to be able to keep track of, of, all, uh, of all your pots and what they, uh, what they all contain. <clears throat> okay, so um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else uh, to say. So you need to set that up. Uh, again, once you set it up, just you can contact me if you're viewing this um, if we're, yeah, if you miss class and you're viewing this because of that, um, you need to set this up and you need to uh, let this go. We're going to initially let it go for a week. It might take uh, two weeks, which is uh, fine. Um, we'll just deal with that if that's what we need to, to complete this experiment. When we uh, take data for this experiment, you'll be going back through this statistical analysis and you'll compare these, uh, you'll compare these two together. And, and you'll do statistics on those two, and then you'll do statistics on these two, okay? And, and then you could also maybe do statistics on a, a number of different um, uh, ways to, to put those together. If you have any questions, you uh, can for sure uh, email me, and I'll try to get back to you.